Hello viewers, we'll be going over gold and silver futures. In this video, we'll be going over the day-by-day -day probability model, the technical performance of each model, how we find the models, comparing both the models to the current trend and the past trend, and we'll be going over the day-by-day -day forecast for gold and silver futures. So back to the technical analysis, we'll start off with gold futures. Today we're up 62 basis points on the one hour chart. We are we were approaching to positive MACD and we are now reaching to near overbought RSI on the one hour chart. If we extend that further on the four hour chart, we are also approaching to positive MACD and we also broke above the 50 moving average on the four hour chart. And at the moment, if we extend that further, we may see another attempt to reach previous highs and I do see a, a resistance around a range of, I would say, $1,762. And we saw previous resistance around that range back in April 14th, as well as in May 18th. So we may attempt to reach that levels. And as for support, I do see a good support level around the 50-day moving average, this yellow line. And that also coincides with previous support levels that dated back all the way to April 20th. And that is around a price of $1,696. So if we do manage to fall back to that support level, that price movement to the downside is roughly around 2.3%. And to the ups upside to hit previous resistance, that is around 1.6% to the upside. So now let's go to the day-by-day -day probability model. Again, these models are now available in the link below, so do check it out. So as the days progress to the seventh day, we have a 71% chance for gold futures to climb between zero to 2%. And on the extreme case, we have a 7% chance for gold futures to climb between 2% to 4%. On the other hand, we have a 14% chance for gold futures to fall between 0 to negative 2%. In extreme case here, we have a 7% chance for gold futures to fall between negative 2% to negative 4%. So now let's examine the day-by-day -day forecast for gold futures. So we have one day out, that will be a Friday, and two days out will be a Monday, and so on. So we have three days out, four days out, five days out, six days out, and seven days out. So which one of these models we should focus on? Ideally, the model that is best matched to the current trend. Right here, we have our current trend as the blue line, and overlapping it is the trend that I believe is the best match. And that trend dates back to May 13th to August 9, 2016. So let's start comparing the current trend first. So we start off at the middle Bollinger Band, proceeded to touch the bottom band, reverse higher, touch the upper band, middle band, or that should be a blue to the middle band and once more we touch the upper band and revert back to the mean to the middle Bollinger Band. So now the trend in question. So we start off at the middle Bollinger Band, touch the bottom band and then reverse higher to touch the upper band, revert back to the mean once more and then touch, I made a good attempt to touch the upper band right here and revert back to the mean. And one thing to note, there are slight slight differences on the trend. So on the trend in the past, we were touching the upper Bollinger Band. Compare that to the current trend it is not. So the trends are similar, but not identical. So do keep that in mind. So among the points and trends patterns that we have here are one, two, three, four, five, six points, and one, two, three, four, five, six points. So there's reason to believe that the trends and patterns are the same. The outcome and forecast should be fairly the same. So the model that we just examined was, let's say it was, if I can find it, roughly around back in June. If Well, let's see. It's, yeah, right here. So back then, gold futures was up roughly around 88 basis points. And if we head back to the day-by-day -day probability model, that coincides with this standard deviation, a 71% chance for gold to climb higher between 0 to 2%. So let's examine closer on the technical performance of each model. On the current trend, we're down 
close to 1.7% from monthly high of 14.7% from monthly low up or down 60 basis points, uh, 23 basis points from 20 simple moving average of 2.6% from 50 simple moving average. And now let's compare that to the trend that we just examined, which was May 13 to August 9, 2016. Back then it was down 2% from monthly high, up 9.6% from monthly low, down 55 basis points from 10 simple moving average, up 21% from 20 simple moving average, or 21 basis point, and 2.3% from 50 simple moving average. So among the two trends, there are technical similarities. So now let's examine silver futures. So we'll start with the technical analysis. And today we're up 1.3%. 1 and on the one hour chart, we are starting to see we're also nearing overbought RSI. And if we extend that further on the four hour chart, and we also start to see a convergence. We're still in the pause of MACD and we extend that further on daily chart. We also are also, I should say, near overbought RSI. And last week I marked these trends as resistance and support levels. We have not quite touched them this week. So I do see the next resistance being again, $18.41. And as for support, that support level is roughly around $16.95. So if we do manage to climb higher to hit resistance, again, that is around 3.8% to the upside and to the downside, that price movement is roughly around 4%. So now let's examine the day-by-day -day probability for silver futures. So as the days progress to the seventh day, we have a 45% chance for silver to climb higher between zero to 4%. On the other hand, we have a 27% chance for silver to fall between zero to negative 4% and 18% chance for silver to fall between negative 4% to negative 8%. And on the extreme case we have here is 9% between negative 8% to negative 13%. So now let's examine the day by day forecast for silver futures. So we start off on first day, Day one, day two, three days out, four days out, five days out, six days out, and seven days out. So which one of these models we should focus on? Again, the model that is best matched to the current trend. We have the current trend right here, it is blue line, and overlapping is the trend that I believe is the best match. And that trend dates back to June 9th to July 22nd, 2011. So let's compare both trends. So we start off at the middle Bollinger Band dip lower to touch the bottom band and then reverse higher to touch the upper Bollinger Band. And we see a similar pattern here as well. Start off at the middle Bollinger Band, touch the bottom band and reverse higher touch the upper band. So what we have here is one, two, three points. We also have one, two, three points. So there's reason to believe that the trends and patterns are the same. The outcome and forecast should be fairly same. So the model that we just examined was again June 9th to July 22nd, 2011. Back then, silver futures was roughly around 1.8% to the upside. And if we head back to the standard or day-by-day -day probability model, that coincides with this standard deviation, 45% chance between zero to 4% in the next coming days. And if we examine closer on the technical performance on the current trend, we're only down 70 basis points from monthly high, up 15% from monthly low, up 2% from 10 simple moving average, and up 8% from 20 simple moving average. We don't have a 50 day moving average, or yeah, we do not have 50 day moving average because we're only examining a 30 day trend. And now the trend that we just examined, June 9th to July 22nd, 2011, back then it was down 1% from monthly high, up 16% from monthly low, up 3.6% from 10 simple moving average, and up 8.8% from 20 simple moving average. So among the two trends, there are technical similarities. Again, these models are now available in the link below, so do check it out. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.